Howdy folks, Tex Scrubner here with Tex Scrubner Outdoors. New videos every week, Motivational Mondays, Weird Wednesdays, and of course, your Tex Scrubner Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness. Now, it is less than a month until whitetail seasons open up for archery here in Illinois, and I have been busy right now. This here did not exist. I have literally cleared all of this with a corn knife, or at least that's what we call it in this part of the country, in most people's part of the country you call it a machete. But I have literally cleared a trail all along here by hand, putting in the work. The corn really complicates a stealthy approach. So what I have also done is with a tree saw, I have literally cut every single limb that hangs over so that I can navigate more easily around the cornfield as well. Basically, I've been putting in an awful lot of hard work to make sure that I can get around this field easier in the wee hours of the morning or at dusk when I'm coming out. But I've also been scouting out other spots to set up and so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pulling the trail camera card out and exchanging cards and I'm also going to be setting up another spot or two spots rather because it seems to me that while you can't control what deer are doing if you can figure out where they're going to be and be alongside them if the wind is good and they don't know that you're there already and they aren't looking for you yet, that you should be able to take them by surprise when they're going about their daily business. That is, at least until the lead starts flying in November and then it all gets shot to shit. I'm sure that I'm going to catch holy hell about the fact that I actually have a stand set up in a bedding area. The general plan is be there before they get to their beds and be waiting on them in their beds. Now this here is a natural trail. I've only been down this trail once and there's a spring way back in there. So in theory they will come out of the field and go down this trail to drink. So first of all, I hope that I've got the audio on this camera figured out. But secondly, this is a wood pile that was created when they pushed all the trees out when they logged the field. So the general plan is I'm going to set this pretty high so that I can get a more panoramic view. And I'm going to be setting right down there. Now it can be really tedious to get a trail camera actually set up and pointing in the direction that you actually want it so that it will trigger. It takes a little bit of doing and some trial and error, which is why it's really helpful to have one of these trail camera card viewers with you so that you can get everything set up the way that it needs to be. The plan is, the camera is where I'm going to be sitting at. Right here is my trail camera. Now the corn is right out there. So the plan is, be set up here, and there's that trail that runs right here. And right here. And that way, I'm set up behind these weeds here. and I can pop up and take a really close shot. So the deer comes down the trail, kill zone, right here. Now it can be really hard to get your trail camera set up, which is why one of these wild game innovations is really beneficial to actually be able to know how that trail is gonna work out. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again. Whitetail are wild and free majestic creatures. 
and you can't make a wild animal do something other than what it wants to do. But no amount of gear can make up for the fact that if a wild animal doesn't want to show up, you can't make them show up. I'm not dealing with TV deer. I'm dealing with 100% free range Illinois whitetail. I am literally covered in burdock seeds and it is my least favorite plant in the whole world excluding poison ivy and this stuff here is absolutely no fun if you get it inside your long johns because you've got your leg zips open on your coveralls however here I have a wood pile and as you can see it's right off the cornfield so I've got things positioned so that my left side is free so I can shoot from a seated position as soon as a deer clears this log I can shoot this way because I'm literally 20 yards from the other trail and of course I can stand and shoot if I need to. Another thing that seems really awesome is hopefully I've got the microphone settings figured out but also the visual quality of this new Canon that I have seems to be really awesome because we're literally getting near the end of what you would call shooting light and we're still crystal clear. I don't care what you think you know about whitetail hunting or how things are apparently supposed to work. But I've been filming my hunts as long as I've been hunting. You, over these many empty seasons, have been watching my journey as both a wildlife cinematographer and, of course, as a bow hunter. I've tried to bring it to you as completely organically as I possibly can. And unlike any other style of film, if an animal doesn't show up, it doesn't show up. I don't care how many trail camera pictures you have. None of it matters because that animal is completely free to change its mind and not show up. I've accumulated a reputation as the worst bow hunter on the internet because I come home empty handed so often. But I am hopeful that with the hard work that I've put in to figure these animals out, along with maybe a healthy dose of luck, that I might be able to break my whitetail curse. I've basically given up on hunting whitetail with a recurve out of a tree stand it's set high up on a tree because the easiest way to make sure that a deer is out of range for me is to be tied to a tree 20 feet up. At least if I've got my stand set low on the ground, I can step off the stand and sneak and snake my way through the timber if I need to, to be able to get a little bit closer. But right now I'm out here at that bedding area stand and I know I'm going to catch holy hell about the fact that I've got to stand near a bedding area, but oh well, it's the way I'm doing business. But right now I want to make sure that I actually have the clearance to be able to lift my bow and take a shot. there and there no more than 20 yards so right now I'm just changing cards in my Christmas tree blind camera and I need to clear the old images off the old card I've got the new card in my wild game viewer here And while I'm at it, I want to take time and actually show you 
this Christmas tree blind one more time. Shockingly enough, the whitetail have been eating on my clover that did in fact come up. None of the chicory seems to have really sprouted or they ate it all off. And as you can see from these trail camera pictures, these animals do not seem bothered at all by my Christmas tree blind. I do have some real good cover here in front of the blind. However, I'm also going to have to get in here with the machete and clear out the inside of the blind and get a camp stool at Menards for sticking in there. I changed my mind. I'm back in here because I'm gonna pull this trail camera out from my Christmas tree blind and set it down by my bushcraft blind that I built from the deadfall because I already know that I'm getting plenty of deer activity right here, but I want to catch another choke point down by the stream that runs through the gully by my bushcraft blind. So right here, I've pretty much got a choke point where I know that they're going to cross down this ravine and come up this trail. So it's on the way to my Christmas tree blind and behind the camera there, I've got my bushcraft blind that I built. And so this is going to funnel them down. Now up over there is the bedding area stand. And so right now all I'm doing is I'm setting up this camera in hopes of catching them and figuring out when they're going to be traveling this. As you can see right here is the edge of my bushcraft blind. Down through here is a gully that's cut by a spring and here is a trail that comes up the hill. And so ideally I want to be set up in my bush blind here and catch them as they come down to drink off that spring. Trying to be positioned according to natural funnels that the animals are going to travel in. So that looks pretty darn good according to what I want. One thing that I've definitely learned about trail cameras over the years is you want to make sure that it's not pointing directly into the sun because as the sun sets or rises it's going to trigger your trail camera and you're going to get a memory card of the sun going across the sky and a whole bunch of empty pictures. Now I've killed whitetail in ways that I'm not particularly proud of and so that happens to skew my moral compass because my goals for this deer season are pretty simple. I want to hunt whitetail in fair chase conditions on my own terms while filming the hunt and preferably taking a scoreable Pope and Young buck with traditional archery tackle on film at a very close range. That's the general goal. I'm going to kind of rant here because I'm in Menards and that's where I buy most of my tree stands at. Now as I stated earlier in this video, I'm done with hunting out of tree stands. But this stand here costs $59. Okay, so a $60 deer stand that you hang on the tree. So a $60 deer stand and probably $40 for a tree stick, 25 foot tree stick. 
So we're about $120 in. What blows my mind is when I'm at the ATA show walking around, right? And they got $300 or $250 hang-on stands. Now don't get me wrong, I've seen the quality of a lone wolf or a summit climbing deer stand. And yes, those stands are absolutely worth the money. But for a climbing deer stand, you want it to be stable, you want it to be quiet, and you want it to be lightweight, okay? Now, I'm all about buying American-made products when I can. Obviously, I've made that abundantly clear. But the simple fact is, I'm in Menards right now. This is a $60 deer stand right here, okay? That's what's going on in my head because I don't get it. Like, Summit and Lone Wolf deer stands, the climbers are expensive, but they're finely crafted, awesome climbing deer stands. But it blows my mind how these people think that hunters like you and me Maybe we're not the target audience. Maybe somebody can explain this to me. But honestly, I have no idea where they get off thinking that they can expect us to pay, what, 350 all the way down to $250 for a simple hang-on deer stand? Get real, okay? I ask questions like this when I'm at the ATA show and I get no satisfactory answers. I simply get dirty looks for actually bothering to ask the question of why does this cost this much when I can get a full setup for $125 at my local Menards? Why should I buy your product? What makes it so damn special? I don't know. I'm not trying to be rude. But it's just so crazy to me what these people expect us to pay for their products when obviously, as I've stated over and over in this clip, this stand right here costs $60 before tax, obviously. And these climbing sticks, great. So we're $120, $125 bucks in. And we've got a deer stand. I don't understand why or what product features some of these high dollar hang-on stands actually have that make them worth 300 or 250 bucks. I don't honestly know. Maybe I'm just an asshole. This is my new Canon Vixia camera. It is a G40 model and it is a factory refurbished G40. I couldn't afford to get a brand new one, but I figured that a refurb was going to be good enough. And by the time that I got the Rode Mic Go and the Vixia, I was in about $1,000. But I figure that I want to bring you guys the best production that I possibly can. And so hopefully it's going to be worth it. does have a wireless remote. One problem is it doesn't have a sleep mode on it. So I actually have to turn the camera on manually before I can operate the remote. But I got the advice from Lambdog76 about using the Rode mic. And... I consulted with the Solo Hunter and the Hunting Grounds and the Wingman 115 on YouTube about what camcorder I actually wanted to upgrade to. Right now I'm taking audio with the Vixia here, but you're seeing it through the lens of my verb because I figured that this was going to be easier than trying to make a movie in front of a mirror so that you could actually see the camera. But thus far, now that I'm pretty sure I've got my audio figured out, the visuals, I would like to think, are pretty darn striking. But the general plan for filming this year 
is to run two Garmin Verbs on a wrist remote, one on the bow and one on a tree, and use the Canon Vixia as a third camera. But with hunting, you never really know. And trying to film an adventure and tell a hunting story definitely adds another degree of difficulty into the effort of hunting. Because I don't have a crew. I'm just one guy trying to live the dream and achieve my goals. But thus far, I'm pretty happy with the Canon Vixia and the Rode mic. But we'll see how it actually works when I actually start hunting with it. There's a little bit of a chill in the air tonight. So that means deer season's getting closer and closer. And I hate to admit it, but I'm starting to get excited. Granted, I haven't started staring at my ceiling fan through the darkness in the middle of the night, fantasizing about bucks yet, but that's probably not too far away. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode of Tech Scrubbing Your Outdoors Saturday Morning Cartoon Awesomeness. Make sure to leave me a comment so that I know that you were here. As always, God bless all my sportsmen of America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please check out my friends over at SOETacticalGear.com. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement and those of you who served in the military. And thanks for watching Tech Scrabner Outdoors.